Hi, and welcome to this special broadcast directly from our studios at Cornerstone Baptist Church in Oviedo, Florida. My name is Edgar Nazario, and today I have a special treat for all the ladies who are listening. But before that, we want to invite you to our 2016 Women's Conference under the title Seeking the Glory of God with guest speakers Susan J. Heck and Martha Peace. Now stay tuned because at the end of the broadcast, we will let you know how to register for this conference. Uh, All the ladies who attend will definitely enjoy a time of fellowship, joyful worship, and biblical teaching. And speaking of biblical teaching, this year we have the blessing to have two very special women who are very well known for their biblical teaching and also their love for God's Word. And I'm speaking of uh, Miss Susan J. Heck and Martha Peace. Now today I have the opportunity uh, with us live on the phone to join us on conversation on the subjects and the sessions of our conference, Miss Susan J. Heck. Thanks, Susan, for joining us. Well, thank you, Edgar. It's a joy to be here. Uh, we're very excited and thankful to have you once again uh, for our women's conference and continue this conversation. Last time we spoke about the first session, and the title is The Contrasted Life of Hypocrisy and Holiness. And we heard about some common pitfalls that Christian women tend to face. And then you also gave some encouragement to how to deal with that. Uh, today, I would like for us to talk about another session uh, that you'll be speaking on. And the title of that session is Needless Worry, Needful Worship. What motivated you to come up with this title? Well, as I studied that passage this last year, I taught the Sermon on the Mount to the ladies in my church and on the radio. And, you know, as I was really looking at that passage and trying to outline it, I thought, you know, uh, Jesus tells us to put it off, put off worry, but then he comes to the end of that portion and he says, instead of worrying, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I, the word seek there in the Greek is worship. And so I begin to look at passages where uh, people that were could have been prone to worry, like Job with with all the things that went on in his life, is losing his ten kids and everything he owned, and it said that Job tore his mantle and lay down on the ground and worshipped. He didn't worry. He worshipped. It says in all this he didn't sin. Mary and Martha, another contrast there. One was worshipping, one was worrying. And I thought, wow, this is the antidote to worry. It's worship. And so I'm going to look at eight points there, eight reasons in that text why we should not worry, and then eight reasons why we should put on worship instead. And uh, it was just revolutionized uh, revolutionized my thinking about worry. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, Edgar, it's almost impossible to worry and worship at the same time. If we believe in a sovereign God, it's impossible um, to do both. And so I know worry is a respectable sin among Christians, but it's not respectable to God. And uh, because it's a slap in his face of his sovereignty and his providence in our lives. So um, we need to really think through this this sin. And I, I'm real excited about this topic because it is a common thing I see with women. Uh, a lot of anxiety and worry and fretting over things that are just uh, senseless, really. And um, so I'm looking forward to, to hopefully helping some of these ladies with this uh, area of sin in their life. When we usually say the word worship, Susan, our culture often relates it to the idea of music. Now, is music the highest form of worship? How does the Word of God define worship in the Christian life? Yeah, you know, the Bible says they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. And so, certainly music is an aspect of that, but if that's all I limit my worship to, then I'm really uh, thwarting God's purpose for me in worship. So if I'm going to worship in spirit, I've got to be walking in the spirit. I've got to have my heart pure from all defilement. And then if I'm going to worship in truth, it, that, it must be according to the truth of God's Word. So I can't come to church and worship. Uh, if the truth isn't being taught, if I'm not living out the truth in my life, uh, that, again, is just another form of hypocrisy. And so worship in get in, involves a lot. It involves, uh, you know, the local gathering of the assembly to worship. It's hearing the Word of God is worship. Even my giving of my offerings uh, is a worship, uh, act of worship to the Lord. So, you know, again, when you think about it, if everything that we're to do is to the glory of God, whether we eat, we drink, or whatever, uh, anything can be an act of worship. And so, um, but I think what Jesus is trying to say there in Matthew 6 is, seek me first. Seek my kingdom, seek my righteousness, 
and then all these things will be added and you don't need to worry. So as I go through my day, uh, you know, I'm home today. I, I can be worshiping throughout the day, but yet I'm going to be doing many things in my home today. But uh, to me, life is uh, is an act of worship, and we have a choice to worry or worship. And uh, But certainly music is a part of it, but I, I think it would uh, behoove us to not just look at music as worship and um but to make sure it's done in spirit and truth. Allow me to move on here to my third question uh, for our conversation today. Uh, Susan, as a mother, grandmother, pastor's wife, and counselor to many women, what would be a biblical way to deal with worrying as the women who are listening face providential trials in their lives? I think to pray about everything as you go through your day and, you know, kids are doing stuff that you don't know how to handle or you pray for wisdom or you get a phone call that's upsetting you pray and ask God to help you 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 go through your life as Paul says praying without ceasing and I think as we do that and as we don't put God in a box as you know I had my quiet time or daily devotion in the morning I go through my day not even giving him another thought I think we're really um thwarting the whole idea of walking with the Lord. And so as I go through my day, I pray about everything, and that keeps my mind and and my heart um, elevated to the kingdom and to him and and uh, just realizing he's ever with me. And so I think that would help young women. It would help widows. It will help all of us, really, um, as we keep focused on things above, not things on this earth, even as we're going through about our daily life of work and and the things that we have to do, going to the grocery store, doing the dishes, doing the laundry, um, we still can be worshiping as we, you know, pray about everything that comes up through our day. And um, so that would be my two cents there. <laughs> Once again, Susan, thank you so much for taking time uh, to talk to our listeners and uh, continue our conversation about our 2016 Women's Conference. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Susan, for sharing with all the women listeners a little bit of the great teaching that is to come. And for all the women who are out there who are listening, let me encourage you to register today and don't risk being left out since we do have a limited amount of seating. Once again, come and join us in our 2016 Women's Conference under the title Seeking the Glory of God with guest speakers Susan J. Hack and Martha Peace. This Women's Conference will be hosted at Cornerstone Baptist Church this coming 15th and 16th of July. All of our ladies will enjoy a time of fellowship, joyful worship, and biblical teaching. So take advantage and register today online by visiting www.seekinghisglory.net. I'll repeat that again, www.seekinghisglory.net. Or if you have questions, feel free to give us a call here in our studios at 407-971-7685. 407-971-7685. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to seeing you at our 2016 Women's Conference. God bless you.